Hello and welcome back to On the Workbench. Today we're going to be working on a Saab 97X and replacing the throttle on it. This has been given a P0121 error in regards to the throttle body. I talked with a mechanic and he said the likely problem of that was the throttle not working and he was actually able to verify that for me. But the dealer wanted just under 600 bucks to be able to fix it. And I said, that's ridiculous. We can do this much easier than that. So here's the repair today on how to replace a throttle on a 97X with a 5.3 liter engine. Uh, this may be similar for the GMC Envoy, the Chevy Trailblazer, Buick Rainier, Oldsmobile Bravada, Isuzu Ascender, and any other related models that I left out. Uh, so follow along and enjoy. The tools you'll need for this are one flat blade, blade screwdriver, a little bit, uh, this is maybe a half inch screwdriver with some heft. One small screwdriver for removing an electrical clasp and a 10 millimeter deep well socket are all the tools that you'll need for this project. The first step in making this repair is going to be to remove the, the cosmetic cover that sits over the top of the engine block. This should be as simple as removing the center screw and this will then lift up. And I'm just going to take that out. And now on the 5.3 liter saw, you can see this is actually really just a GM Vortec engine. And so to get to our throttle, which is located right here, we're going to have to be able to remove uh, this manifold here. There's a, a pipe clamp here we've going to have to loosen to be able to get that off. And that's going to remove the coupler there. We've got a coupler over here. There's an extra sensor over here to be careful of. And otherwise, this should just pop right off. So now I need a nut driver and we'll get that off. Now with that snorkel out of the way, for the air intake we can see the throttle body here. We've got our electrical connection here and we've got one, two, three, four bolts. Pay attention to the bolt pattern on the throttle. And we're going to have to go get that off. You'll probably need a deep well socket to get to a couple of these, as well as to make sure you get your electrical connection here taken care of. And it should slide right off. For the electrical connection, I like to use a small flat headed screwdriver to be able to get the little key out. Make sure you don't lose or damage the little key because we'll need that to get the, the connector back in. And then that comes off and we've got the connector. You can see there's a six wire connector and make sure you push down after you get the little clamp off to get that off. And now we've got the bare throttle body sitting there and now on to getting that removed. For the removal, we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket or a 10 millimeter nut driver. I'm going to break these off here. Not break them off, but just crack the nut. Have my socket go all the way around before I loosen and pull them all the way out. I'm going to want to make sure that you don't lose these screws and make sure you pay attention to the bolt pattern on top here you can see where we've got the nuts are a little bit different than the ones on the bottom I reach down and remove the ones at the bottom the bottom one here the rest of the way by my hand don't lose these screws because you'll need them with the with the new part the new part does not include these screws to the side and now our throttle comes off just like this. Let's take this aside and inspect it. Okay looking at the old throttle you can see there's definitely a lot of carbon deposits on the back side here. There's a little bit of uh, maybe some grease or something over there. The outside of the condition here actually looks in pretty good shape. If I go to spin this there's an amount of resistance. 
because there's a spring action in there that helps to hold this closed, which is a safety precaution that in order for it to open, uh, it has to mechanically force it to be open. The spring will shut it. And so here it is in the closed position. You can trip it back and forth like that. The brass is in pretty good shape. We've got our throttle position sensor here on the side, our TPS module, and that's tied to the part. The new part does include a TPS. And so the issue on this one here is this was not actually able to open all the way. For whatever reason, something was preventing it in the mechanism, but you can't just buy that. You've got to replace the whole thing, um, as the module here is also attached to the unit. And the module wasn't faulty. It was the mechanism of the unit itself, which is separate from the uh, special service bulletin that's out on the 97X. So let's take a look at the replacement part. Our replacement part looks like this. You can definitely tell a difference just at first glance. Much, it's very shiny. Uh, the brass is shiny. It also comes with the module. There are no screws or bolts that come with this. And so this is, uh, it's interesting here when we look at the part number here, the box, the one that I bought is a TechSmart by SMP, uh, model number S2008. This is made in the USA, so I'm impressed by that. And this includes the throttle position sensor module right there. And so as we work through this one, you can see how clean it is. There's no carbon deposits or anything, so all you do is now take this back over to the car. See the mounting holes on the side? Now we just have to bolt this back on. Over at the vehicle, this is a good chance to be able to just double check our gaskets here because there's a gasket built into uh, the rest of the air intake there. Uh, so that's why the backside is shiny. Just a good chance to inspect that and make sure that's fine. In my case, it looks good. So we'll proceed. Otherwise, you might have to replace this uh, gasket as well. It's a good time to inspect that. As well as the other side of your air intake off of your... Uh, other box over here, make sure there's no debris in there. There shouldn't be because there's a filter screen. But while you got it apart, you might as well just give it a quick check out. And so now that we've got that, let's put the module in place. Okay, so now we're going to take our old throttle, or our brand new throttle. This is just going to slide right on. And then I'm going to start with the bolts that I removed. These do not come with the new part, so again, make sure you save them. Just going to hand tighten those. And now we'll proceed to put on the top bolts. Make sure you're careful to thread these on. One at a time to get them started. Make sure you don't drop these down into the engine. And so I'm going to work with two hands to make sure I'm careful making sure I get them onto the studs. Once I got them finger tight, I'll come back with my socket wrench to tighten this up. Make sure you don't over tighten them, get them nice and firm and secure. And then once those bolts are on, let's come back and add in our sensor and our electrical clip. So that's clipped on. We'll come back and add the security key. Keep that from getting unclipped. That pops in just like that. And then now all we have to do is reattach our intake manifold hoses. And then reassemble that. We'll come back with our screwdriver and tighten down our hose clamps. And so now with the throttle body in place, we've got our hoses all tightened up. We'll just put on the nice cosmetic cap and then we're done. The total time for this repair is probably a little bit, oh, right about 10 minutes if you're not making a video. And just what anyone can do this. So if a dealer wants to charge you about 600 bucks for them, just silently laugh to yourself, walk out, uh, go to your nearest auto parts store. You can get the replacement throttle. Uh, if you get the right coupon codes for a little less than $200 and do it yourself with the minimal tools and you'll uh, profit by about $400 back in your pocket. It's dirt cheap and ridiculously easy. The dealers really do make a killing in profit on this one.
And now with the cover on, we're all done. Okay, so now with the vehicle all put back together and the hood back on, there's one final thing you're going to have to do. And this isn't really something I can show you directly on camera, but you're going to have to put your key in the ignition and let your vehicle idle for about three minutes, shut it off, and then idle again for three minutes, shut it off. You might have to repeat that several times, go through a couple cycles so that the drive-by-wire throttle can recalibrate itself with the engine computer because the engine computer tries to continually optimize the performance of the throttle to match it and then you'll want to go on uh, several drives probably about 50 60 miles an hour you'll accelerate back and forth slowly at first you won't necessarily have full acceleration so don't jump immediately onto an interstate where you need to accelerate on an on-ramp especially in an urban area you're going to want to find a nice section of some rural highway that you can drive and just get it up to speed and back down so your engine computer can actually learn the new throttle because there will be a big adjustment going from your old one to your new one. If you fail to do this, your vehicle may not accelerate properly and you may not might not have the acceleration you need to, to merge properly or to avoid a dangerous situation on in an intersection. So please, 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 after you're done with this, make sure you give it a cautious drive cycle, let it idle and let the computer take time to learn it and don't jump right on the interstate trying to accelerate. Unless you have a rural section of interstate like I do, I drove down a rural section of interstate up and down uh, some U.S. highway and some county roads to be able to get everything calibrated. And now after about 50 miles worth of driving, everything is back to normal and good to go. So I hope you found this useful and have a great day.